This tutorial will help expand your use cases for code overrides in Framer Web. In another video, Add Interaction with Code Overrides, I explain what overrides are and how to get started using them. This tutorial will build upon that knowledge and make use of animation to bring your prototypes to life. This is Coding with Seth, let's see what we'll be building. This tutorial series is best viewed in the context of Framer Web. If you're on YouTube, use the link in the description to follow along. We'll take a look at how we can use a code override to give the user feedback when hovering over buttons. Then we'll see how to add animations to existing overrides to make them more visually appealing. We'll dive into how transitions can be used to get a staggered effect. And finally, we'll see how we could combine logic with our code overrides to animate the freezing of a card when we tap a button. Let's dive straight into the first scenario. We have five buttons visible on the home screen, but it's not obvious when hovering that they're any more than just icons. Let's give the user some feedback by highlighting the button and raising it slightly. We'll create an override. Let's change the background color and the Y position only when we hover over the button. To do this, we'll use while hover, and inside we simply specify the properties we want to change. Apply the override, and there we have it. Opening the preview, you'll notice that when we hover over the button, it moves up slightly and changes to a green color. With Framer Web, it's really easy to experiment with different hover animations. We can bring up the preview while looking at the code. Let's try changing scale instead of the Y position. We can test it out and revert our change if we decide that Y was better. If you ever get stuck trying to figure out what properties to change, or exactly what features you have to animate in Framer Web, look at the Framer Motion documentation. The animation in Framer Web works in a similar way to the Motion API, and you can use these docs as a guide for learning more about transitions and some of the utilities available. If we look at our previous while hover override for our buttons, we can see the while hover prop works exactly the same as the object we specify for our override. Let's take a look at extending an existing override. Looking at our transaction detail view, toggling doesn't feel very satisfying. The controls move abruptly around the screen. Let's tweak the toggle to instead animate between positions and the history section to fade in and out. We'll jump over to our override and update toggle action placement and toggle visibility on history. These are the only overrides that need to be updated because instead of just setting opacity and position, we want to animate them. As a reminder, our entire interaction is driven by the toggle and a single is showing history state. This is done by wrapping the updates in animate. It's as easy as that. Now let's preview it and see. When we toggle, the history panel fades in or out, and all we've done is wrap our change in animate. It's pretty good for changing a single line of code. We're going to set the transition property. This takes an object that can affect how the animation works. I'm also going to add a delay to toggle visibility on history. We want to avoid the toggle overlapping the panel when we start to animate it. Let's animate the Y position of our toggle action placement too. Sure enough, the toggle moves up the screen with a bounce and the history fades out but let's explore how we can gain a bit more control over how the animation feels. If we want a spring or linear animation, how long it should play for, the type of easing, etc. We're going to change the easing for our toggle so it doesn't bounce. I'll set it to ease in and out. Check out the motion docs for different types of easing that are built into Framer Web. I'm also going to add a delay to toggle action placement the transition property in the override object can be contained within the animate property or the override object itself. For consistency, we'll move this one out. As you can see, we've made use of transition to fine tune our animation and turned our once static prototype into something more. Let's push this even further with a different scenario. Going back to the home view, I want to add functionality to this freeze card button. We're going to make use of different overrides to animate in a label, telling the user if the card is frozen. Update the button icon, change the button label, and fade out the card itself. Let's start with the easiest first. 
we'll take a look at freeze card label and freeze card icon, which don't have animations, but they're a good example of how you can make use of overrides for small pieces of functionality. We simply read data.isCardFrozen and we can set the text to unfreeze or freeze. We'll attach our overrides. The freeze card label override should be attached to the label under the shield. We'll use the layers on the hierarchy view on the left to choose the freeze button container and attach the toggle freeze card override. The freeze card icon override should be applied to the icon within the freeze button component. There are two icons I want to toggle between, which can be found in the icon dropdown of this icon component. Using handoff mode, we are able to inspect to the components and figure out what props they have. To help us create our freeze card icon override, I inspect the icon itself and see that there's a prop called icon selection. Our override should attempt to change this prop. With freeze card icon, again we can read data.isCardFrozen and we can set the icon to shield off or shield. Now that those are out of the way, let's take a look at animating the label in to emphasize the action the user has taken in freezing the card. We'll go over a new concept to animate between two states called variants. This is a great feature of frame of motion which makes it easy to define different states you want to animate between. Then we simply tell Framer which state we should animate to using the animate property. Let's start by defining two variants, one for frozen and another for unfrozen. When the card is frozen, the label should be visible and in the center of the screen. In an unfrozen state, we'll move it off the screen and set the opacity to zero. When we try this out in preview, it works as expected but the animation is pretty bland. Let's define a transition so we can tweak how the animation feels, as well as properties like type, easing, and duration. We can also adjust these per property. Let's say we want the left property animation to be a spring animation. We simply add left to the object, and within it, we'll define a spring animation. This looks pretty good, but the reason I added left here is so we can define a different animation style for the opacity. At the moment, it bounces back and forward, but I think a linear tween would be better. So we'll do the same thing for opacity. This time we specify the type as tween, set a linear ease, and we're going to set a short duration so it fades out before the spring animation causes it to bounce to the right slightly. Now. Clicking on the freeze card button shows an abrupt label animation to really draw the user's attention. There's one final touch I think we're missing. The card itself still looks like it could be used. I'm going to add another override, freeze card opacity, to fade the card out slightly and scale it up to give it more emphasis when the user freezes the card. I'm also going to show you how we can make use of another cool feature of frame of motion in the animation. Start by adding animate and transition properties. Let's have two different animations, one for when it freezes and another for when it unfreezes. To achieve this, we're going to make use of data.isCardFrozen, like we've seen before, to control the two states. The opacity is straightforward, 0.4 when it's frozen and full opacity when it's not. The scale, however, is where we're going to use an array for the first value. This tells Framer to animate between these values to create the easing. This gives us fine grained control to create a little bump animation as the card scales up before returning to its full size. We're going to use a simple tween animation for the opacity, but the scale should happen slightly slower. There we have it. A full suite of overrides we've made to control the look and feel of the view, all powered by a single button. I want to revisit the buttons we made at the beginning. We used a simple while hover animation to achieve the color change and movement. But how can we play an animation when the user's hovering over the button? Let's explore Framer animation even more to have a button that doesn't just transition to the new state, but bounces up and down. Let's set our empty overrides for advanced hover first. 
so we can quickly prototype them in the preview while we code. The first addition we need to make to the hover is to actually nest a transition property within while hover. This gives us control over animations we want to play within while hover only. For the Y property, to create a bouncing animation, we're going to add yo-yo, which plays the animation forward, and when it reaches the end, it plays it in reverse. Setting yo-yo to infinity means that as long as we are hovering over the button, the animation will continue to go back and forward. We'll set ease on the transition itself to linear. I want the background color to transition, but not animate back and forward like our Y property. This gives us a nice bouncing animation. For the final touch, I'm going to add a subtle box shadow, showing another technique we can make use of in Framer. We'll also expand the transition to include Yo-Yo Infinity, so it matches the bounce we already have. We'll apply the override to the remaining buttons. This concludes breathing life into prototypes with code overrides. We've covered simple animations responding to user interaction, extending existing overrides to animate between states, complex animations with more than one override, and using transition to tweak the feel of animations. Thanks for watching. In the next video, Drive Prototypes with Data, I'll expand more on how the data instance works and how we can use it to build out more functionality in our prototypes. Until next time, this has been Coding with Seth.